Hey everyone, Justice Good here, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to recreate a Pandora themed wallpaper. So, the first thing you want to do is open a new document by File, New, and I'm going to use my wallpaper resolution, which is 1920 by 1200 pixels. You can make it any size you want, depending on what you want to use this design for. The first step to starting this is changing our foreground and background colors. So for the foreground color, you want to use a really dark blue, kind of like a greenish blue. So I'm going to use this shade right here. It's the color number 001F42, but you don't have to get exact. And then you want to use the same shade, but a little bit lighter. And of course, you can go back and forth and adjust it, but it's pretty much just going to go from dark to light blue. Now you want to go to Layer, New Fill Layer, Gradients. Select OK, and on the drop down menu, you want to select your foreground to background gradient. And then just adjust it, adjust the angle so that it just goes from light to dark, really. And you can add a little bit of an angle to it. I'm also going to check Dither to remove some of that lines and banding in the gradient. Of course you can play around with this, but this is just how I'm going to do it. So now that you have your background, the next thing you want to do is create a new layer. You can do Shift Command N on the keyboard or Layer New Layer. And on this new layer, we're going to start brushing in some of the bubbles. So grab your brush tool. Uh, if you don't see your default brushes, just hit the cogwheel and hit reset brushes and just pick your very first brush. Turn the hardness all the way up to 100% and the size, depending on what kind of canvas size you're using, you want the biggest bubble to be about this big in comparison. So I'm going to use a 250 pixel brush or about 200, 250 to 300. Now the most important step to making this work is going to window brushes. So you want to bring up your brush panel and if you've never used a brush panel it lets you adjust the shape and the flow of your paintbrush in Photoshop. Very useful tool. So under the brush tip shape menu you want to turn the spacing up to about 500 to 600 percent and then you want to uh, check shape dynamics and turn the size jitter up to about 75 percent um, you might if you have a, a tablet attached you can do this by pen pressure but you might run into some problems here so just turn that off if it's checked on unless you have a tablet and you know how to use it. So under the control, select off. And again, about 75% jitter. And then scattering, select that as well and turn it all the way up to 1000. All right, so that's all you need to do for the brush. This little window right here kind of shows you what it will look like over that length of a of a stroke. But uh you'll see when I start painting here. So on this new layer, you want to let's change our foreground color to a really light blue, almost like a white. And before you start brushing, make sure you lower your your brush opacity to about 70% and turn the flow down to about 85. So I'm going to actually increase my brush size a little bit just based on my canvas but I can go ahead and click and drag here and it'll start creating these random spots. If you're not happy with how it was generated just go ahead and edit undo or command Z. So you might have to do it piece by piece and uh, a couple different times but let's do one larger section in the top left here. Alright so I'm, I'm happy with that. Then you can lower the brush size and do 
a smaller section and notice how I'm just undoing if I'm not happy with it. You can even lower it a little bit and then let's increase it a lot and maybe just do one large spot right here. I'll actually do it right here. Uh, maybe that's a little too large. You see you can just play around with it, kind of go back and forth with it. But once you're happy with that, you're going to go to another new layer, layer, new layer. And this time you can select a different color. So I'll use a different shade of blue. And pretty much the same thing. We're going to go ahead and brush through here. And I'm kind of just going to create like a S pattern there. And then one thing that, one great tip is instead of dragging your brush to get a cool little bubble effect just click once and then leave your brush in the same exact spot and click again and you can see it since the shape is changing but it's staying in the same spot it creates these cool little bubbles and that's more like how the Pandora's website is so you can do that a couple times that's a little too much there and you can adjust the opacity a lot in between these so you can just see it just click wait till the brush changes and then click again and repeat so I'm gonna do one more layer layer new layer this time I'm just gonna use solid white and I'm gonna go through one more time again mixing between strokes changing the opacity um, changing the brush size a bit and then doing that little double click trick so once you're happy with the way that your space is filled out you could keep going and do different colors but about three different colors is pretty fine what you want to do is add some depth of field so you want to take the first layer with that the layer with the biggest bubbles that you use the largest the largest brush size on and go to filter blur Gaussian blur and you just want to blur it a tiny amount maybe like five pixels then you want to take the second layer and go to filter blur Gaussian blur but this time only do much less like maybe one or two pixels and then leave your top layer as sharp as you like to bring the whole image together and give it some final touches you want to go to layer new layer select OK and go to image apply image this takes your entire image and pastes it onto one layer for you to work on and the reason I did this is so you can go to filter blur lens blur you're just gonna turn the radius up about 15 to 20 you can use any shape you want really I'll use the pentagon and then under the highlights you can turn the threshold down just enough so that you see some white highlights peeking through and you can adjust the brightness I'm gonna use about 30 and 227 it's gonna be different for your photo but you don't want it to be like this where everything turns completely white you just want it to be some white just peeking through so I'll use 227 now the most important step is just adding some noise here um, I'll use about five pixels of uniform noise you can make it monochromatic if you like I'll leave it in color for this 
but select OK there. And then I'm going to take the opacity of this and turn it down to about 40%. You can even play around with the blending mode and set it on soft light if you like. And But I'm going to leave it on normal at about 35%. Finally, if you want to adjust the entire mood and color of it, you can go to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, Photo Filter. Um, I like to check Preserve Luminosity, and then you can use one of Photoshop's preset warming or cooling filters, and you can increase or decrease the density. I'll just add a very slight cooling filter over the whole thing. So you can see um, before and after those final touches, it kind of brings everything together. The main portion of if this is going to look good or not is how much time you spend on the brush. So the little details, brushing in those little bubbles, I could definitely have spent more time and made it so that everything just flowed properly, but everything is randomly generated and so for the sake of this tutorial, that's the basics on how to do it. If you like this background, I'll leave it below for you to download. But again, it's all about taking your time and placement. So hopefully you learned a few tips and tricks. If you have any questions, leave me a comment below. Again, subscribe for a new tutorial every Tuesday and more videos on the way. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.